All right, and three, two, what's up, y'all? This is the master of minis, the more you know moment, right? We're going to talk about this concept of the AI medical assistant. And I want to give you an example on how I used it to give me my own medical advice. Did the master of many just say he doesn't need me anymore because he now has an AI medical assistant available to him at all times? No, 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 that's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I, I believe it's gonna allow us to make better informed decisions about our health. And you know what, let me, let me just give you my example on how it worked for me. Let's do it. Okay, I posted this video where I talked about my trip to Machu Picchu. And during this video, I also talked about how I had this big fall going down this hill after visiting the Christ statue. You can see here, I got mud all over my arms. I even have a little blood on my palm. Um, I ate it. I hurt my back. Um, I was pretty miserable. Okay, so I was in some serious pain. I mean, I couldn't go from a seated position to a standing position without grabbing on to something and, pull, and pulling me up. Um, but when that happened, I started to create this dialogue with, with the AI. I created a thread, right? A history of what was going on and my symptoms. And then when I got back to the US, I continued to do that because I was still in some severe pain three weeks after I returned. And that was the moment where I decided, well, I need to go to the doctor because I can't live like this anymore. There is literally something wrong and I don't know what to do. So I went to the doctor. I went to a general doctor first and I got no valid information or no information of relevance other than some meds and to go see a specialist, right? So I would say that was a waste of time. So what you're saying is you may not need to see a general doctor like myself because of the AI medical assistant? I, I, I'm just saying in that particular moment, that was a waste of time. So I went to see an ortho a specialist and he looked at my x-rays and he came back and said, I need surgery. He took me into his office. He told me about the surgery. He even gave me a referral to a patient of his who just had the surgery to you know, so I can validate how great it was and, and how I can be back on my feet in a, in a couple of days. Um, but I didn't want surgery. Uh, I left there and I got a hold of my x-ray results and I uploaded those results to the AI and continued my, my dialogue with the AI. As you can see here, the AI gave me some insight. It also said that MRI results would be good also. And I actually had those. So I uploaded those MRI results also. And the AI didn't recommend surgery. It wasn't one of the options. As you can see here, the AI recommended physical therapy as the number one option, right? But who am I to go against an orthopedic specialist who specializes in this stuff? Right? Yes, how dare you question me, my years of study, my judgment, my recommendations. You're messing with my money too. Hmm, surgery, physical therapy. So I started to think that AI right now are these massive supercomputers being trained on, you know, terabytes, petabytes of, of, of data and it's constantly updating daily and getting smarter and smarter and smarter. And, 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 and no human can, can compete with that, right? Um, and based on the history that I've given it, it knew more about my injury than this doctor, right? I seen this doctor for 10 minutes and he's recommending surgery. What are you trying to say, Mr. Master of Many? Would you just get to the point? Look, just like in any profession, there are tiers to how good a person is in their profession, right? And, 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 and doctors is the same way. Like there are doctors who are mediocre in school and then they, they became a mediocre doctor 
And, you know, they still have a job, but they're not as good as some of those, some of those other doctors out there. And, and, and there's no way of knowing it. And it's expensive to shop around for doctors. I can't go from, you know, to this doctor, to this doctor, to this doctor. It, it gets costly, right? Um, so I'm also considering that I have this AI medical assistant that is being trained on so much data, like, it's being trained on all the existing data that that doctor has been trained on, in addition to what this other doctor has been trained on, and this doctor has been trained on, and this doctor has been trained on, and it's being updated daily, every second, right? So, I mean, it seemed as if the smart decision in that moment was to lean towards the AI, right? And it gave me no reason to lean towards surgery. So I went the route of physical therapy. And three weeks later, after physical therapy, I was back on my treadmill running three miles. I was back in my living room taking these online classes, lifting weights, right? Doing the, the, the body pump and the insanity classes and, and, and all of that, right? And today I have no pain, no pain whatsoever. I can sit down and stand up without any issues. So kudos to that physical therapist that was helping me out. You just got bad advice, Mr. Master of Many. I would have told you to start with physical therapy also without using any AI. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I will give you that. I will give you that. But, but let, me, let me give you another example, just in case you, know, you were questioning this whole concept. So my daughter plays tennis and I went to pick her up to take her to tennis practice one day and she was limping when she came out to school. I was, I was obviously concerned and I asked her what was going on. She gave me all the symptoms. She said that something kind of pulled or popped and it was a lot of pain and, and she's sitting here limping. And I started to immediately start a thread with the AI on these symptoms and what happened. And it was giving me a range of possibilities, but nothing specific, right? So as the night went on, I kept asking her questions and how she's feeling. And then I, I fed that into the AI. And then the next morning, I, I continued to do the same thing. And, you know, it was giving me additional information as, as I built that knowledge with the AI on, on what the possible problem could be. And then I, I took a picture of her leg and she pointed to where the pain was, right? I put a little X on the picture. I uploaded that to the AI and I said, examine this image and tell me, tell me what you may know. And this is what it said right here. So it said that the probability was very high that it is an abortion fracture. It also said that we should stay off the leg and go see an orthopedic doctor or a sports doctor as soon as possible. And that's what we did. We jumped on the road. We went to urgent care. We went, we, we saw the nurse. We told the nurse what was going on, which wasn't the greatest conversation because she didn't have a lot of details of what was going on. Right. But the AI, I was able to go back and forth and learn so much. But anyway, that's, that's a whole nother topic. They did the x-ray. They came back and they said, it's an abortion fracture. I'm just saying. So then I went back to the AI and I worked on a workout plan for her upper body since she's limited to what she, sh she can do because of her injury. And then I also worked on a health plan, right? Because I want her to eat as best as she can because she's not going to be as active as she was previously. And then we just got to wait for about a month and then we go back to the doctor to get another checkup and an x-ray. Wait a minute, couldn't you go get your own x-ray or MRI, then upload it to the AI and then monitor your own progress without going back to the doctor? I mean, that's, that's a great question, right? Because technically I could go to an imaging center and a la carte the x-ray and the MRI along with the radiologist results, upload that to the AI and come up with my own action plan, right? For this healing process. I, I could do that, but I do have insurance. Um, 
I don't think we're quite there yet, but we're pretty close. We're, I mean, where this is going, we're, we're pretty close. And, and unless that doctor, right, has a specific skill that I need, right? Like an actual surgeon with very good hands and knowledge or whatever, like, if it's just knowledge base and to go in and get an x-ray and then just figure out like where we are in the healing process, do I really need to go back to the doctor to do that? <laughs> yes, you are saying that AI is going to take our jobs and you will no longer need us. I think what he's saying, Dr. Oldie, is that you need to start using AI to help you do our job better like I do. Otherwise, it's a wrap for you. <sighs> Look, there's a lot of pros and cons with this whole AI ecosystem. But I will say that one pro with this AI medical assistant idea is that let's say I, I didn't have medical insurance, which there are a lot of people out there that don't have medical insurance. The uninsured rate in the first quarter of 2024 was 8.2%, which is 27.1 million people. And it may get worse. And they never go to the hospital under any circumstance, because they just can't afford it, right? They just deal with the problems themselves and it gets worse and worse and worse. So imagine I, I, I had an issue and I hurt my ankle, right? And I went to the AI and I, and, I, and I put in the symptoms and it said that I need to stabilize it, right? So create a splint and stabilize it and let it heal and then you'll be fine. So then I don't need to go to the hospital into the emergency room for something that I can kind of help myself on that road to recovery without having this expensive bill from the hospital over something that I, you know, I probably could have did myself, right? And then there might be something that's more serious where I do need to go to the doctor and it's giving me that information and I probably should just bite the bullet and go get it fixed because it's it's more of a life or death type of situation versus just sitting at home and doing nothing and letting the problem just get worse and worse. So, you know, pros and cons, I don't know how you think of it. Um, I think it's going to evolve wherever you are on this AI journey. It's definitely going to be much different in six months from now and then in a year from now and then in two years from now because it's moving so fast. I mean, if you notice the clips that I've had in this video, those are not real actors. It's AI generated. And me being in the Screen Actors Guild, what does that mean for me and my peers? Bruh. I'm just saying. <laughs> Till next time.